Good morning, students. All of you, I am welcoming everyone in the class of English for class 11. Children, I am myself, Jyoti Rathor, and today we are going to start our first chapter of our second book, that is Snapshot. Clear? And the name of our chapter is The Summer of a Beautiful White Horse. This is a very nice short story written by our great writer, William Seroyan. Okay? So, children, here in this lesson, we just come to know about a beautiful white horse. That is the name of the lesson itself. And why this white horse is very important, that also we have to see. Clear? Two main characters are there of our story, that is Aram and Moran. So, we have to see that why this horse is so special, what are the qualities of horse, and why this horse are very much liked by these two boys, and what kind of story is formed. Okay? So, we have to go through the lesson. Please read the lesson after completing it. Clear? The lesson is written by great writer William Saroyan. Let me tell you some of the things related with this writer. William Saroyan was an American Armenian novelist. He was a playwright, he was a short story writer. Armenian, American. In this America, a place is there, a short place is there, a district is there, Armenia. Clear? And this person, he belongs to this area. That is why in this short story, he has specially mentioned the area Armenian. So we have to see that what are the special qualities of Armenia. No? And then, he was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 1940. We all heard about this Pulitzer Prize, this very important prize like in India, we are getting in the field of a novel or in the field of writing, we are getting some higher awards. In the same way, in America, people are getting Pulitzer Prize. Now, 1943, he won the Academy Award for the best story of the film, Human Comedy. Okay? In Wikipedia, you can easily find out that this best comedy, best human comedy has, he has mentioned and for that he has got this Academy Award also. Now this person, he was born on 31st of August 1908 and the area was Frenzo, California, United States. In America, he was born and he died on 18th of May 1981. In the year 81, this great writer, he died. And he died itself in Frenzo, California, United States. The movies, Human Comedy, Ithaca, The Time of Your Life, Banishment, My Heart in the Highland, Hello Out of There and so many things. Clear? Number of short stories he has written and those short stories converted into great uh, film, filmy um, comedies also. Okay? And then, award he has got, Academy Award for Best Story, New York Drama Critics, Circle Award for Best American Play and many more. So number of great award this person has got. Now children, let me tell you the character of our short story as I am telling you two main characters are there. So let me tell you about this boy Aram. Aram, he is the narrator of our story. In our story, this I, I, anywhere this I is used, that is, Aram is telling his own story. Okay? So, first character is Aram. Next character is Morad. Morad is Aram's 13-year-old cousin. Clear? Next major character of our story is Morad. Morad is nearly 13 years and he is the cousin of Aram. Then we have Uncle Khusro. Uncle Khusro is Aram and Morad's crazy uncle. This word crazy especially it is mentioned because in our lesson we come to know that a tagline, a punchline again and again used by this uncle. It shows that uncle is not at all stable one. Clear? Mentally this person has some problem. That is why. Then we have John Byro. John Byro is an Assyrian farmer and a friend of Garo Halian family. This term Garo Halian, in our story I am telling you what is the meaning of this term Garo Halian. Clear? So uncle Byro also. Okay, now after this, after the characters, I just want to tell you about the theme of our story. See, this is the theme of our story, a conflict between the feelings and the reasons. Okay, feelings of these two boys, Aram and Morag, and what are the reasons why they have done so, that also, there is a conflict. Now, there is a confusing situation between feelings and reasons. So, let us see this. Throughout the short story, Aram and Morad are caught between what they feel and what they know. Clear? They know something, but they feel something. So, there is a confusion between these two. And then, when Aram first sees Morad riding the white horse, he knows that Morad must have stolen it. 
So first our character, first our narrator that is Aram, clear? Aram he had seen that Morad is riding a horse, but he knows that he is riding the horse, the horse which is stolen by him, clear? And why it is stolen? The reason is, as the family is too poor to afford a horse, these two boys they belong to a poor family, okay? That family is too poor that they cannot afford a horse. And then, yet he feels that this cannot be the case, for his family is always honest. But as I am telling you, there is a conflicting situation. Aram is thinking that Murad has stolen, but on the other hand side, he is not believing. Why he is not believing? Because the family, they have known for their honesty. They are very much honest, okay? Now you can also imagine a people, a people who is too honest. He is not at all doing any kind of theft. Understood? Then, as Aram greatly desires to ride the horse, he begins to make justification for why they are not stealing. Clear? Aram knows that Murad has stolen. But on the other hand side, Murad is clearing the justification. He is giving number of justifications that I have not done this stealing. This is not at, not at all a stealing. And then, he cannot go against his family's honest reputation. On the other hand side, as I am telling you, their family, it is known for their honesty. That is why he is telling, I will not do any such kind of stealing because I belong to an honest family. That is why. Now, Aram and Morad, they continue to make decisions on the basis of feeling rather than reason. Such as when Morad decide that keeping the horse for six months isn't stealing, Whereas keeping it a year would be a stealing. See children, for example, if you have stolen a pencil, clear somebody's pencil you have stolen. You are keeping the pencil for two days, for three days. Afterwards, you are thinking that I have to keep that pencil as it is on the place where it was. Do you think it was not a stealing? Yes, it is a stealing, clear? Without informing that person, without telling that person, you have taken the thing of that person. Definitely it would be a stealing. So, in case of one pencil or in case of one horse, stealing would be stealing. If the master is unknown that you have taken that thing from that master, definitely it would be a stealing. But in this case, Murad is telling I am keeping the horse, keeping the horse for six months. Clear? He is telling six months is not at all stealing. If I will keep this horse for one year, that one year would be a stealing purpose. So, now, when the boys meet Byron near the end of the story, by refuses to accuse them for theft and decide to believe with his eyes instead of heart. He chooses faith over reason and let the boys go. So John Byron, he is the real master of this horse. From this John Byron only, this Murad, he had stolen the horse. But at the end, when Byron come to know that what was the purpose and when he had seen the condition of horse, he let the boys go. Clear? He uh, would not punish them. And then, the fact that Morad tells Bairo that the horse name is my heart. Okay? This is the name given for that horse by this Morad. He said, that is my heart. And definitely when we are talking about our whole body, our heart supposed to be a special case. Okay? And when we are telling something as our heart, definitely that thing would be very special for us. So it is symbolic. The boys justify that they are keeping and riding the horse with their hearts are not with the reason. Okay. So there is no reason that we have stolen the horse but the horse was our heart. That is why we kept the horse with us. Now, so in the end, Byro's comment to the boys prevent their desire from clouding their reason any longer and return the horse the next day. So when Byro he met the horse, now, and he had come to know that the condition of horse is very good. Next day, both the boys, without informing the master, he kept the horse as it is. Okay, children? So, this is all together the web of our story, all together the whole story. Now, the summary of our story, the beautiful white horse. This is the story of two tribal Armenian boys who belong to Garo Halian tribe. See this term Armenia, as I am telling you, in America it is a place, it is a district, Armenian district. Okay? These two boys, Aram and Morad, they belong to this Armenian tribe. And then they belong to Garo Halian tribe. Like in that particular area, Armenia, a tribe is there, and that tribe is counted as Garo Halian's tribe. Okay? Now, 
For their family, even at the time of extreme poverty, nothing could match the importance of honesty. This whole tribe, this whole Garohelian tribe, they are living under extreme poverty. They are very much poor, so poor they are. But on the other hand side, these people are very much honest also. Now, they never did anything wrong and never lied or never even stolen anything. The special quality of an honest person, they never do any such kind of wrong deeds. Like, they never did anything wrong, clear? No wrong deed would be done by them. They never lied. And the third thing, they never steal anything. Okay? So, stealing, that is not at all possible by this tribe. Now, the story talks about an incident that revolved around two cousins, Aram, who is 9 years old, and Morad, who is 13. So, two boys are there, Aram and Morad. Aram, who is the narrator of our story, he is nearly 9 years, and Morad, cousin of Aram, he is nearly 13 years. Now, for that time, they seem to be delighted in an extremely joyous and mysterious dream. Now, for this boy Aram, like at the age of 9 years, if people could imagine anything, so people would be very wonderful for them. Though they are living under extreme poverty, but when they are thinking about this world, this world would be a mysterious dream for them, a very joyous, a very enjoyable dream for them. Now, People believe that every imaginable kind of magnificence, Morad was considered to be crazy by everybody he knew. So Aram, as he knows, his cousin Morad. And Morad is simply a crazy character of Garohelian tribe. And all the people, all the common people of Garohelian tribe, they are thinking that this boy uh, Morad, he is simply a crazy character. Now, the story opened with Morad coming to Aram's house at 4 o'clock in the morning one fine day. So one day, nearly about 4 o'clock in the morning, this boy Morad comes. Clear? And he is come in front of Aram. Now, he tapped the window to Aram's room. So he is tapping. Tapping means tap karna. Okay, so he is tapping the window. When Aram looked out of the window, he was aback and startled to see Morad riding a beautiful white horse. So when this boy Aram, he had opened the window, what he had seen, that this boy Morad, he is riding a horse. And the horse was very beautiful and white in color. In fact, he was dazed that Morad had to say, yes, it is a horse. Clear? So he is dazed. Aram is dazed here. Why he is dazed? Because as in the beginning only I was telling you, the whole tribe was very much poor and they cannot afford a horse. But the cousin Murad, he is riding a horse. So he is dazing. Huh? He is simply startled here. And then, yes, it is a horse. You are not dreaming. Murad announced, yes, it is a horse. You are not dreaming. All this was too unbelievable because Aram knew that they were too poor to be able to afford to buy a horse. Again, the same thing comes. They are too poor. They cannot buy. That is why it would be a dream for Aram. Aram is thinking that how this person, he has got a horse. The only way Morad could possess it could be stealing. Only thing Morad is think, uh, Aram is thinking that Morad has stolen a horse. They were too honest to lie and too crazy to ride a horse. Clear? Too poor. On the other hand side, both the boys, they are very much crazy that they want a horse and they want to ride on a horse. Clear? Now, thus they kept the horse for two weeks, enjoy the riding in cool air and singing to the heart of content on the country road. So for nearly two weeks, that is nearly 15 days, they had kept the horse. And every day they are enjoying the riding. Clear? They are talking with the cool air, riding that horse in a cool breeze. Now, they headed the rest of the world by keeping it in a barn of a deserted vineyard. Clear? But somehow horse is supposed to be a big animal. They can't simply ride and ride every time. They have to keep that horse during the night time. So during that night time, where they are keeping the horse in a barn. Clear? Barn means a place where people are storing their food articles. Now, Aram come to know that the horse was stolen from John Byro. So after these two, three days, after one week, this boy Aram, he comes to know that this person, Mr. Murad, he has stolen the horse. And from whom? From Mr. John Byro. So they plan not to return it as soon as 
it predicted coins, co coincides, uh, coincides to steel, which was completely their ethics and tribal norms. Now they have decided that we will not directly return the horse to John Pyro. Why? Because this is against our ethics. Clear? Ethics of the family that they are very much honest, that they are very much loyal. Clear? Now, one fine day they come across John the farmer. Such was the boy's family, famous for their honesty that they thought of the horse being stolen by the boys, never crossed John's mind. Clear? So this John Byro, when they come across these two boys, he had seen his horse, but the boys are thinking that this person will not come to know that this horse belongs to him. Why it is so? Because our family reputation was very much fine. We belong to an honest tribe. So he was very much amazed at the resemble and said, I would swear it is my horse if I did not know your parents. So this is the line spoken by this John Byro. He said, I swear, clear? I swear what? That this animal belongs to me. But on the other hand side, if I don't know your family, that means you belongs to, you simply belong to a very honest family. That is why this deed will not done by you people. Now, this moving experience led the boys towards John Vineyard and the very next morning they left the horse in the barn after patting it affectionately. So this meeting had a very great impression. Even this line which was spoken by John Byro, a very great impression upon both the boys. And they had written the horse as it is without saying anything. And they had given lots of affection towards this animal because they loved the animal very much. Now. So they left the horse in the barn. Later that day, John seems to be very pleased and shared the news of return of his horse with Aram's mother. And next day, this John Byro, he comes to Aram's mother, clear? And then he is telling that definitely I have got my horse back. So the story teaches the importance and necessity of honesty even in the face of greed and passion. Though we, we are very much greedy, we are very much passionate, but then on the other hand side, we have to be very much loyal and honest towards whatever we are doing. So children, this is altogether our whole story. A very nice short story written by William Saroyan. Children, you must read it. You must go through the short story. And after reading this, the lesson which we are learning, that is honesty is the best policy. Even every day in our prayer, most of the time I have heard this thought. Clear? So this thought is very clear in this case. Okay? So this is altogether our lesson. Now children, uh, I know you people have uh, really started your studies. Clear? Some of the children, they have talked with me about those studies. Whatever we are doing, whatever uh, we are learning, that is a thing which is done by you people also. Understood? So thank you very much.